What is going on, everyone? We are back with the PowerPoint presentation style for this video. My fellow shareholders, I thank you all for coming back for this important presentation. I have received a lot of comments about making a support guide, but also I see so many supports not playing to their fullest potential. And it's not necessarily their fault. Lost Ark does not provide supports any feedback. The MVP system is terrible and there definitely needs some changes in this role. So before we go over everything about support and how to master this role, this is the part where I insert my shameless plug to subscribe to the channel. We have been killing it. And at the time of this recording, we have passed 500 subscribers. <laughs> Woohoo! Celebration time! Woohoo! Yeah, celebrate, baby! Okay, we also passed the 6% mark of those who have subscribed to this channel. So now I gotta get even greedier and wish for 7%. Let's do it. I appreciate if you do subscribe, but if not, all good. I hope to earn it some other time. Anyway, let's get on with the video. The so first things first, I wanted to say that this is not a class specific guide. I will be talking about some class specific things, but for the most part, it will be about supports as a whole. So oops, sorry if you got clickbaited, but I hope you learned something here at least. Okay, so in general, there are five main things a support must do in a raid. Give an attack power buff, Give a brand buff, give an identity buff, give yearning buff, and give heals slash shields. Now, it's not in order, but we will be going over these in this specific order. So, number one is attack power buff. Now, typically, the supports I see do not really have a problem with doing, uh, doing this part. But the supports who are wondering why they have such a low attack power uptime I can think of three reasons. Either number one, you're not a good player. And that's okay. Don't feel bad about it. Number two, you aren't buffing during your important DPS windows. A great DPSer will always be hitting the boss. So ideally, you should also be always buffing 100% of the time. However, not every DPSer is great. So the second best time is when the boss is staggered or charging up an attack, basically standing still. A boss that is standing still will be so much easier to hit because you don't have to dodge. Be sure to use your buffs during these opportunities. The third thing that I can think of is that you are not cycling your buff skills correctly. This can either be because you just don't have high enough cooldown gem or you are simply just spamming your skills on cooldown. Be sure to only use your second buff skill after your first buff skill is about to end. You will know this by finding the red sword icon above your HP bar. Also, a bonus time, bonus time, a bonus reason I can think of specifically for bards and artists. These two classes have a location-based buff. So any DPS not standing in that radius Will not receive a buff so make sure you're placing that buff in the correct place so tldr use your two skill buffs in succession get a high enough cooldown gem and place your buffs in areas where your dps's are you should strive for 90 percent plus uptime all right number two giving a brand buff this is the one that most supports seem to have a trouble with if your branding is low, there are two things I can think of. Number one, you are forgetting to use brand off cooldown. The brand cooldown is very low, and you need to spam this more often than you think. I would suggest recording your gameplay with a boss that shows the brand indicator and see how often that indicator stays there. And number two, you don't have a brand buff. No, this is not a joke. I've played with 1630 supports, yes, S, supports that don't have a brand skill. Don't do this. 
please look at the Lost Ark Nexus site guide for the proper build. Brand is a must. And especially for bards, you need two brand skills. You should strive for 90% plus uptime. Number three, your identity. This is your Moonfalls, your Serenade of Courage, or Blessed Aura. This is the maximum damage amplifi amplification that should always be available during key DPS window times. The more often you can use this buff, the faster your raids will be cleared. You should strive for 50% plus uptime. Number four is yearning. Okay, this is a shout out to my pet peeves video. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go over there and check it out after this video and subscribe. You know, I'm going to slide it in in the middle of the video, but you know, subscribe if you're enjoying the video. Anyway, in order to proc your yearning relic set, you need to hit the boss or actually just hit something. So at the start of the raid, if the first thing you aren't doing is hitting the boss, then that is something to be mindful of. Be sure to give all your buffs at the start of the raid as soon as possible, since most DPSers will be using all their skills at the start of the raid. So yearning, attack power buff, brand buff, whatever, everything should all be sent out at once, right? Especially yearning in the beginning. Okay, number five, give heals and shields. Let's start with heals. So other than Paladin, both Artist and Bard need to sacrifice some of their identity meter to give heal. This is where it gets tricky because you need to decide whether you want to give an identity buff or a heal buff. For the most part, you should just give identity buff, but if there's any DPSs complaining that you aren't giving heals, you know, duh, it's most likely their fault for not dodging, but... If you see someone with low HP in your party, it is better to heal them than risk them dying and wiping the raid. That's just how it is, right? Unfortunately, maybe you won't be able to use your Moonfall, your Serenade of Courage, but if people in your party just suck, you gotta deal with it, right? What else can you do? But also, now we can talk about shields. Shields do help alleviate a lot of the problem healing causes. If you know that there's a great DPS window, but it results in the DPSers being damaged during, make sure to heal or shield and damage reduce all the attacks so that the DPSers can continue DPSing. Knowing these timings will allow the DPSers to continue DPSing without needing any healing, and it also helps you to clear the raid a lot faster. Now, I'll just pull up an example. If you do Daymine Gate 3, there's that little mech that he does where the back, back is not safe and the front is safe, right? Where he like slashes his sword like from the front to the back, but it does hit the back, not the front. Normally, you would want to stand towards his head, but back attackers want to hit his back. And it's a great window for a support to shield during that time for the back attackers to completely ignore that mech so they can do damage. And it's not going to give them any stacks and no harm, no foul, right? Those are the situations that I'm talking about here. Okay, so in summary, as long as you're mindful of these five things, you will be the support every DPS wants in their party. If you do use a DPS meter, the uptime you should strive for is 90, 90, 50, which means 90% attack power, 90% brand, 50% identity. I hope this was helpful for all you wonderful support players. I thank you for your service. If it was helpful, liking and subscribing will help me know it was. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.